Yeah. Thanks, Ty. Oh, here's Karen. Oh, great. Karen. And I see um, Chris, but not uh, Annie. Um, I saw okay. her. I thought she was coming on, but okay. Well, let's uh, let's let let's. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order at that at seven o'clock. Oh, seven o one now. Um, and this is our regular. Um, planning and zoning meeting for Thursday, February 9. Um, and um, we have um, all six regular commissioners um, and um, we've got one alternate and I would uh, elevate Chris to, let me take that back, Chris. I'm gonna uh, alternate um, Anne to voting status. Um, and then I would like to move on to uh, the agenda item number three, which is uh, the next on the agenda after one and two. So agenda item 3A is, uh, um, are the regular meeting minutes of January 12, 2023. And I would look for um, uh, some discussion or a motion to approve. I'll make a motion that we approve. The regularly scheduled minutes from 1 12 23. I'll second that. Great. Thanks, Adam and Wes. Any discussion? All those in favor, so signify by raising your hand or saying aye. Aye. And that motion carries. Um, uh, agenda item 3B are the special meeting minutes of January 19. Um, and I would look for uh, a motion to approve or discussion. I'll make a motion that we approve. Uh, the special meeting minutes of 119.23. And I'll second that. Great. Thanks, you too. I'm like rock stars already. Yeah. Keep it up. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, um, raise your hand or say aye. Aye. And that motion carries. And then the agenda item 3C, um, the last of the minutes, which is the special meeting minutes of January 30, 2023. I will make a motion. I'll do it. Second. No. Okay. All right. Any discussion? Then all those in favor, hands or aye? Aye. And that motion carries. Great. Um, okay. Uh, agenda item number four, um, public communication oral. Is there anybody um, in the group who has um, something to say about anything that's not on the agenda tonight? And you can turn yourself on or raise your hand on Zoom. Um, and seeing none, then um, then I will move on to old business. Um, but first, um, I'm I neglected to uh, um, to talk about the rules, the meeting the meeting rules. So I'm going to do that really quickly right now. So this is a public meeting, which will be audio and video recorded just like every other planning and zoning commission meeting. Um, we ask that all um, applicants um, uh, keep your video on when you're talking um, and anybody in the public, if you wanna make a comment during the public uh, hearing um, that you uh, take yourselves off mute and turn your video on, the commissioners will um, in, in general leave their video on and uh, turn their, 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 and definitely turn their, uh, they're mute off when they're ready to speak. Um, uh, we ask that everybody be respectful, that listen carefully, that we don't interrupt, um, that we stay on topic, um, speak for yourself and not somebody else. Um, it's okay to disagree, but remember this is a discussion and not a debate. Be candid and avoid making assumptions about other people's um, intentions. Um, so again, we'll, we, will ask, uh, we will ask for comments from the public um, during the um, public hearings. Okay, great. So um, public hearing, um, agenda item 5A1, um, I would reopen the public hearing for application numbers 118-22SP and 117-22C. Uh, Susan Hugh and uh, Jeffrey Kane Weiser 
trustees of 100 North Main Street, map 19, block 42, lot one, renovation of existing barn into a two bedroom accessory dwelling unit. Um, and um, with the public hearing open, um, I would start out by saying that the applicant has asked us to, um, to keep this public hearing open on through our March meeting um, because they weren't quite ready to come before us at this meeting. Um, so I'll leave it up to the commissioners um, to decide if we want to have any discussion today or whether it makes any sense just to table this, whether it makes more sense to table this until the applicant is ready to present next month. Well, I'll make a motion that we table it. The applicants aren't here. It's a public meeting. I don't know that there's, I don't think there's anybody here to provide any information um, pertaining to the application. I don't see the purpose of having a discussion about it um, in their absence. I'll second that. Any discussion from any of the other commissioners? Okay, so then uh, um, all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Aye. And that motion carries. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about this. Uh, we'll talk about this in a month. Um, let's see. Um, uh, 5B1 is the application, is the discussion of possible decision on that same application. And um, I think we will um, table this as well. Do you need a motion for that? I'll make that motion. Thanks, Adam. Yes, please. Second. Great. Thanks, Wes. Um, then all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and are saying aye. 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 And that motion carries. Okay. Um, uh, moving on to new business. Um, so this is um, uh, a public hearing. I'm going to open the public hearing for application numbers 09-23C and 10-23SP, Kent Center LLC, um, Lee Garofalo, applicant, 9 Maple Street, Map 9, Block 42, Lot 35, installation of EV charger. And if you give me just a minute, um, I am going to read the legal notice. Um, the town, town of Kent Planning and Zoning Commission shall hold a public hearing via Zoom meeting on Thursday, February 9, 2023, beginning at 7 p.m. to discuss and possibly act on application numbers 09-23C and 10-23SP, Kent Center LLC, 9 Maple Street, Map 9, Block 42, Lot 35, installation of EV charger. At this meeting, at this hearing, persons may participate and be heard. Any corresponding documentation will be filed in the February 9, 2023 public meeting folder, which can be found here. Um, and there's a, uh, um, a web link, web address. Um, at this hearing, persons may participate and be heard. Um, so I would suggest that we start out um, hearing from Ty, if that's all right. And you could, you could uh, tell us what your thoughts are, and then we'll go on to the applicant. Yeah, so this is, you know, as you know, your very first application for EV charger since your new um, regulations are in place. Um, I, the applicant actually just today dropped off an updated um, application and she did a pretty good job of going through the provisions of 8284 one by one, um, indicating how they fulfill each one of those. So. Um, it looks pretty good to me. Um, let's see what that you guys think. I did a staff report. I think, you know, I covered basically what you need to look at in this case. But can I ask who does Lee, who does Lee Graffalo represent here that she's, that she's applying to put this EV charger in the parking lot? Um, because it also, it says nine Maple street, but that's not where it's going. It's not going at nine Maple street, but it's going somewhere else in the Kent barn. So I'm, I'm right. I mean, that, that parcel that the Kent Barnes is on the map block a lot are related to nine Maple street. I don't know how you guys know it as I know there's a couple addresses. It flipped back and forth 
over the, you know, when it was approved between, I think, you know, North Main Street and Nine Maple Street. So I don't know what to say about that other than the assessor's card calls it that. Okay. So let's answer the first, let's let uh, Lee answer the first question, Adam. That's, uh, that's um, who is she uh, applying on behalf of? Um, I'm applying on behalf of Kent Center LLC, the landowner. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and did we get something from, uh, is, is, is Hiram still um, managing that or he's, he's, he's finished and um, there's a new manager? Is that you, Leah? Lee? Uh, no, Hiram's no longer um, affiliated with Kent Center anymore, um, but I worked with Hiram, so I've actually been working um, for almost seven years um, on Kent Center. Okay, I think that satisfies the commission, right? Do we do we do or do we we usually have a letter from the owners uh, um, designating uh, an, uh, a representative? Is that necessary, Ty? Let's see if there's one in this packet. I mean, yeah, I think we need. I mean, if you're if you're the property manager there, so but we need something. And we've. I'm sorry, I've just never. So, I've never met you, and I don't know who you are in relation to. I I believe you, but we need to. Anybody could come in and just sure act a permit saying they're representing somebody, and um. Does any does the commission have any um, objection to continuing along? I think that's I, I think that would be right to continue along and 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 pending uh, um, and we could just ask for that um, as a as a follow up. I, mean, I know Lee. Um, she she is uh, uh, the representative of of the owner. I I also there's also just so you know there's also paperwork authorizing me. I signed um, other documents uh, for the street work um i was the person who was authorized to sign all the documents handing over you know a few feet of uh property for the sidewalk project so yeah. i have been authorized already by the ownership her her name does show up in the file previously oh okay great. i don't know if she was an imposter then as well <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's good for me i just didn't know yeah. and, and wes is a tenant there and he knows so um I'm good with that. And now we've all seen you and we know who you are. So. <laughs> um, okay, so so then the next question is, uh, it, that actually, it, it brings up a, a, a point um, that I was going to raise um, as we discuss this a little bit further, um, but there's, there's three parcels there, right? There's 10 North Main, there's nine Maple, and I, is, it, is it three North Main? It's three Maple. Three Maple, mm -hmm. um, and I know that, and, and I, I, I think, I think that I'm sure that Ty is right. That nine, that nine Maple runs all the way to the back there, and three Maple is the is the corner lot with part of the parking behind Swift, um, and the House of Books, right? No, yes, House of Books is the Ten North Main. Okay, parcel. And then 10 North Main has also uh, the uh, farm store, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and if I remember right, and I know we're getting, I'm getting way ahead of myself here, but if I remember right, there's a shared parking agreement between Three Maple and Nine Maple that should be updated because, um, because of the different parking configuration, really taking... Because you're you're designated though designating those spot those spaces as um, EV EV charging spaces only, we have to you have to make sure that 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 um, that you are okay with having nine Maple take away two of those parking spaces that three may have used. Mm -hmm. um, so those were your two questions so far, Adam. Right? That's 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 that was yes. your first volley. Yes, it was. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, I think it would be helpful, um, Lee, if we saw um, the um, the pr property lines. If 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 you could submit back to us. Um, 
a sure. plan that shows the property lines for all three mm -hmm. because there sure. seemed to be a question about the side yard and i believe it's a side yard setback there right ty right ty well um according to the regulation for ev chargers the side yard setbacks don't apply it was just the front yard front street setback and because this is nine maple um do we interpret that the front lot line is along maple street nine maple is the building that um used to be my office used to be wes's office used to be the morrison gallery um it is now whatever i'm not sure who's there right now um but it, it's that building that's that's more or less opposite the Sotheby's is in the building right yeah. now. Okay, that's where Sotheby's is now. So um so the front of it would be over there. And I, I think this would be a side because the address is nine Maple Street and you walk in off of the street, that's considered the front of that of that building. So okay. I would think this is a side. And just just by looking at the lot, right? The the uh, um, the lot as depicted on Map Nine, Block Forty Two, Lot Thirty Five, it doesn't have any frontage on um, North Main, right? So it's it's logically the the front would be along Maple, which would make the side yard of where they want to put the um, the charging station. So that so they they seem to meet. The setbacks then it's i think that's the conclusion that we're reaching right i think so lee i have a question are these going um in the parking lot kind of on the back side of uh of the of the barn yes. where where tim sneller's office is yes it's yes. going to go in behind it but a little bit more to the right like more towards the back so there is no frontage there you have you have buildings there and you've then you're there mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, the information Lee that you provided today, Ty, did that get into the, into the, the folder yes, late this mm -hmm. afternoon? Yes, it did. Um, it's, it's under, it says like revision on it. I, everything that she added today says revision. Okay. I think I, I think I got those then. So revised Kent Barnes, revised, revised. Okay, fine. So that was at uh, that was at twenty after three this afternoon. That was uh, you think I have the the most recent? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so Lee, do you want to take us through um, that? What you think about that checklist on the on in the regulations? Or would you rather us ask you questions? Um, I think you could ask me questions. I think if you've read it, I'm not sure that. It would it would be efficient for me to go through every point in there. If you want to ask me questions, I'm happy to answer anything. And my colleague, Amy, is also here, so she may jump in and answer a few questions as well. And Amy is? I'm here. Oh, hi, Amy. Hi. And Amy, what's your last name? McKay. Great. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You too. Um, So I am going to open this up. You know, if I can ask, um, because I had read all this stuff before the revised um, things came in, is it, is it, is there just more information on the revised things or is there is there any substantive change in the There's in no the change it's just additional information. Okay, thank you. That's great. Matt, is there a um plot plan or map that you can share us share the screen with? I I didn't get or I can't find on my phone the revised file. I don't um, I, I don't I, have a There's a map and it's um 
in the um, PDF document. It's page four. Okay. It, it's a good map, Karen, if you if you can figure out which it's the first. I believe it's the first one that says revised. It says 6A1 revised Kent Barnes, Kent Center LLC EV vehicle charging station detail. Aaron, can you see that? Specifications. I might have lost. Uh... I, uh, Karen, um, you're on mute. Can you see my screen? I'm sorry. Yes, I can. Thank you, Matt, for putting that okay, up. Great. Got it. Um, so you kind of see where it's my, my, my cursor is. So this, this is the entrance. We go past uh, artifacts here, right, in here in this location. And then it's right back here behind. Um, uh, 18, is the, uh, 18 is the barn, right? Or six? No, sixteen is the barn. Sixteen and is the is barn. A smaller shed. Mm -hmm. Eighteen um, is a smaller shed on a different um, property. Okay, thanks, Lee. Um, and this actually, th this actually does show if if I'm if I'm correct that this these are the lot lines here that I'm tracing here, right? So this is ten North yes. Main, mm -hmm. and this is. Where's that lot line? No, I'm sorry. This is this is three maple. This this corner mm -hmm. lot here, and then so okay. So nine maple does in fact have a little bit of frontage on Main Street, which complicates it a little bit. I'm reading that right, aren't I? Because it looks like. Uh, um, what's in there now? That's Bartley's old shop, right? 13. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like 13 is part of three. I'm sorry, is part of nine maple. I believe you're right. Um, I think there might have been a lot line revision in 2015 to include the building marked 13. Um, because the it's different ownership of that parcel. Um, you know, it's a different LLC. Um, and the building that includes the building labeled 13. Okay. Um, does this does this configuration that we're looking at with that with that small frontage on Main Street change the opinion of the commission that um that the front yard should be as depicted um the front yard should be along maple street i mean that's 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 how this the the, the that's how the setback is set on on nine maple at least to me because so Matt, when they... Maple used to be my office and and the next building was also it was um I I do think that they are it's a Maple Street address and the frontage is along Maple. And Wes, we... you started to say something? Well, I think I remember this because I was associated with uh Swift, um that there was a lot line change. You can see where the lot line is. Yeah. Uh, and um, um I think the yards are exactly as you say. I mean, I I don't have any con uh, uh, misconception that Maple Street is not the not the front. Okay, that's great. Any 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 of the other commissioners um, have any other um, ideas or comments or thoughts? Um, and then we can um, put that I think discussion to bed. Okay. So um, we're we're back we're back we're back at the at the 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 setbacks the the setbacks as required by our regulations are satisfied. Um, Lee, did you in the new plan or sometime in 
from the, from the first submission to the next or this latest submission add a a bollard or had that bollard always been there the, the parking uh, bollard in between the the, the, the bollard the was added okay correct amy well there's always plans to do something to um you know we put we basically we put more detail on with reference to the bollard in this plan so if you look at um Point three, where I've gone through, where I've gone through the provisions, it talks about the detail of what the bollards will be. Um, and then if you're going through that same document, there's also page six. Um, page six has detail on the bollards um, and where they are. And then also page um, seven. Yeah, that's what I saw. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so there's the bollard there, which is which is one of what was one of Ty's comments from her initial review. Mm -hmm. you, you can see how they're going to do it in that picture. <laughs> so you can see where it's, where it's going to be and how the bollard will be in the size of the charger. Right. Right. Um, the charger scale in that picture, I think, is a little bigger than what it'll actually be. Um, I, I think it's going to be a little shorter in the, it, it, I think it looks, it comes up higher in this kind of rendering than I think it will. And um, could you talk to us a little bit about what the, uh, there, there was some reference in the documents to a, uh, uh, a, a screen, an LCD screen, I think, is that that small piece that's, that's sort of underneath the, the, the black Shroud. Yeah, so underneath the the in the black rectangle that you're looking at where like the wires come in, there's a screen that stays static um, until somebody goes to plug in their um, car, yeah. um, but they can also um, do it from their phone. And they can they can just hold their phone up to the charger and that, you know, you can kind of see it in the picture there and then they can they can enter everything that they need to in there because basically what charge point is is it's um it's you can pay by credit card like if you don't have an account but most people who have an ev will sign up for a charge point account because it's they're a very common charger and then you just put the app on your phone you go up to the charge port you put your phone in front of the thing it recognizes your phone it unlocks the um the charger so you can unplug it um, and plug it into your car. And then from there, you just tell it how long it'll alert you when you're done so they can move out of the space. Um, and it just handles all the communication with the individual directly. Oh, so that's pretty neat. So he, they can walk away from yes. the charger and then it alerts their phone. Yes. That, that the charger it alerts them when it's almost done. And then tells them when they're done so that if they're shopping and they, you know, need a five minute notice, it'll tell them in five minutes your car will be done charging. And to somebody, whatever point you told it to, either fully charge their car. I'm just, this is just curiosity. If mm -hmm. they leave your car after it's done charging for a period of time, do you get charged for taking up the space and? You can, you can charge them. Um, we have the full ability to set. Um, you know, if we have idle fees or if there's no idle fees, we can make free parking on certain days if we want to, where people can charge for free, we can change the rate. Um, so we can do whatever um, if we, if we need to, or want to, or finding that people are using the parking spaces and aren't charging at all, um, but are plugged in you know, we can charge an idle fee if we feel it's a problem. Okay. I was, like I said, I was just curious. I wasn't sure how yeah. it worked if somebody- I'm, I'm hoping that we don't have to do that. I wouldn't, yeah. I don't think that the way we would start out doing this would that is that we would charge an idle fee. If we find that people are, there's a line, people are waiting. That, I don't think there's that many EVs yet that that's going to be a problem. Right. 
So two, with, oh, I'm sorry, Lee? No, no, I was just gonna say two, two cars can charge simultaneously on this one charger. And it's a level two charger? Yes. Um, does the commission feel the need to go through the um, 8284 provisions that the applicant has uh, responded to? I don't feel the need to go through it all, but um, I don't know if anybody else does. Um, it uh, it looks like a, a complete application to me. Um, I think that I would um, uh, sort of retract my 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 request for a um, a plat showing the lot lines because I think that the uh, I think that that um, um, that map in the application um, shows the, the lot lines well enough. Um, and uh, coupled with the discussion that we had, I don't think I need that. Um, I do notice in the picture that we're looking at now that uh, the, the parking spaces are not delineated. And I know that, I know in some cases over there, 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 there are, there's line striping. Um, but I suspect that the line striping is hard to maintain because of the uh, the, the oil and gravel nature yes. of the parking. Yes. That's only handicapped or indicated. Only handicapped or indicated now. Right. Um, so it it, it seems it, it it makes sense to me um, that these spaces. Well, let me ask let me ask it as a question. Does it make sense that these spaces are are delineated more than what would be indicated with the two bollards and the and the and the charging um, uh, pedestal. Well, this is a new application, so um, um, but we haven't revised that that um, that regulation requiring uh, striping. I mean, we could. Um, if there's no other space that's been delineated. It's pretty obvious where where you come in and, and charge. See, you know, I, I think that that if they find that people are, I mean, I see the value of, of striping it and I think I would want to do it, but it's their property. And, I, and though I see the value of it, I think if, if they find that people are crowding the, the spot so somebody can't two people can't get into charge then they're going to put lines in and if that doesn't happen then they won't but i, I don't know that we have to require them to do that um, well what happens if somebody just parks there well th then they do and but it's yeah. again it's their parking lot it's not our yeah. parking lot it's not the town's parking lot and they'll do something about that i mean the Lee just had said, you know, they want to start it by not having, you know, you know, charges for somebody who takes up a spot and leaves their car. But if they're finding that that's an issue, they'll address that. I, I think that's something that the owner owners can address. And I don't know that that we as the Planning and Zoning Commission have to address whether they put a line lines up for their EV charger. And it's not our job to police or even be concerned if somebody parks and blocks their EV charger, because it's not our EV charger. It's just their EV charger. Yeah, you know, we, uh, I, I, I tend to think that we should, that, that the parking spaces should be better defined. And like Wes said, we haven't done that in our regulations, but I don't think there's anything to say that we that we couldn't define these parking spaces better. I mean, we were just looking at an application, the ARB was just looking at an application the other night, um, a, a revision, a possible revision to an application. Um, and um, we were talking about, they were, they were talking about uh, wheel stops. Right, the the wheel stops that are you know eight 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 and a half feet long that fit within the within the space and on a on a gravel parking area those seem to be a good way to delineate parking spaces. Um, 
So I would not be, I don't, I don't think it would be a burden, a financial burden um, to identify these spaces with wheel stops, with, you know, concrete, concrete wheel stops. Um, I don't, I don't like, the, I, I mean, personally, I don't like the, 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 the poly plastic ones that are painted yellow, but I think it's, I think a, a precast concrete um, a wheel stop here would be appropriate. Would you want that instead of the bollards? I think you need, I think you need the bollards to not run afoul of the regulation, the, the 8284. Okay. Um, the 8284 um, allows for um, a curb and a wheel stop. So it, it allows for a curb in lieu of bollards if you have wheel stops as well. Um, it's really just something to stop people from driving into the, into the, the charging. Mm -hmm mechanism uh, yeah, i think the bollards protect your unit i don't think the wheel stop necessarily does right there's a lot of right. larger vehicles if somebody's backing mm -hmm. up not even to park there you know a truck has has five feet sure or before you know so they'll they'll hit that charger before they get to the wheelchair the wheel stop so it, it, it makes sense to me to delineate those parking spaces in some way. And I think the easiest, most permanent way would be a wheel stop, but that's just my opinion. And we can, we can, we, we can discuss that um, after we close the public hearing, if that's the desire of the, of, of the commission. Right. Um, but let me pause and ask if there's any comments from the public. regarding the application. And you can come off, uh, you can turn your video on, you can come off mute, you can raise your hand uh, remotely. Um, I'm not seeing anybody, so I would then turn it back over to the commission members to see if they um, require any additional in information from the applicants. I think the application is very complete. Um, and in terms of location, it couldn't be a better location. I agree, Wes, and it it it, it fits squarely within um, within the ideals of the plan of conservation and development, um, and I think the ideals of this of this commission. I mean, not to speak for everybody, but that's what I hear. Can I ask you before we close the public hearing, um, you don't have any problem with us requiring, with our requiring you to put in wheel stops? That's no, that's fine. If you need us to do that, we can do that. Okay. I just haven't looked into it, so I don't know. Um, I don't know how long it will take to get. I don't know how much they cost, but we'll, we can do it if that's the requirement. I suspect that they're available uh, um, uh, through any precast concrete uh, target in tor and touring near Torrington, or I, I think they're available. Okay. I I agree, and I think that I, I think, yeah, the the financial burden is uh it's, it's it wouldn't be a financial burden. No. Well, I shouldn't say that. I don't think they're very expensive. Is what I should say. Sorry. <laughs> I just I want I just wanted to ask to because we're going to go into when we close the public hearing we can't ask. I thought we should because I think it's a good idea. You know, so. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, if there's no other information that we require of the applicant and there's no public comment, I'm just going to pause here, just make sure that nobody is just can you on the couch. Can you unshare your screen? Of course, yes. How's that? Thank you. My pleasure. Um, then I would look for a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. I'll second that. Great. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and are saying aye. And that motion carries. Okay, great. Um, so now um, the next item on the agenda is um, 
6B. And this is the discussion of possible decision, 6B1, application numbers 09-23C and 10-23SP, Kent Center LLC, Lee Garofalo, applicants, 9 Maple Street, map 9, block 42, lot 35, installation of EV charger. Um, so I would look for some discussion amongst the commission. Matt, I have a question. This is Alice. Can you hear me? Yes, Alice. Hi. Um, for since this is kind of our one of our first uh, shots at this EV business, um, every time that an EV a charger is erected or installed or whatever you call it. Will we be having this discussion every time? And if so, then um, are we setting precedent by requiring, what, are, what do you, I, I call them lines, you're calling them, what are these tire things, whatever you call it. Um, are we setting precedent by requiring something here we wouldn't require somewhere else is my question clear i'm, I'm not sure <laughs> so i think we've set it up that way to be site specific I, I, I think it's site specific not you do okay i just i just wanted to be sure that i understood that mm -hmm. that it will be it's not a you know same same place same everything everywhere like this place because I, I feel like I know it. I can I can see we don't need a lot of lines and fences and all of that kind of thing. But there could be places that you could imagine somebody backing right into another car or something. Right. You right. know that. Um, so so Wes, you answered my question. It's we will have to do site specific consideration. Okay. And and it's a special permit, and that yeah. that allows us to do that. Allows us to look. There may be another another place where where we don't feel it's necessary to put um, yeah. to put that in. But in this case, I I do think it's a good idea, and it delineates for other people where somebody should park so they can use yeah. the truck. No, I I I'm just wanted to clarify in my own mind that that's what that's the way we were headed here. Okay. Great. Um, anybody else? And so, so we, we think we we're satisfying the needs of our, um, regulations with regard to EV chargers. Um, we think we're satisfying our regulations or do we think we're satisfying our regulations, um, with regard to the special permit? I do. It seems like it, it matches what what we've written and it seems like it matches what we want you know and we we want to encourage ev chargers it's um it's in a good place it's close to the center of town um it's an easy place for parking i think it's a i don't see any problems with it from from what i've seen and what i've read in the in the uh regulation Anybody else? Well, in terms of parking, I, I don't think that these designated spaces will interfere with traffic, uh, with, with parking at all. Uh, I, can, I can testify that uh, the, the, the parking is, is not well utilized behind there, except maybe on the weekends. And, you know, if somebody with, there's enough electric cars that, any electric car that parked in the parking lot would maybe just park there and charge charge their car up. Um, I do think it's important to uh, to have an updated uh, shared parking agreement um, because there is a shared parking agreement between um, nine and three, nine maple and three right. maple. Um, which somewhat excludes 10 North Main. Um, so uh, I, I would like to make that a condition of approval um, 
just that we receive it before we issue the uh, um, uh, the the zoning permit. I think that's a good idea. So with that, I'll make a motion to approve application. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. We need uh, there, there's there's oh, a couple the of waivers that we have to uh, accept. Yep. Um, so I'd look for that motion first. I'm trying to find them. Yeah, me too. <laughs> there's a lot of you know. Me there's too. a lot of it here. <laughs> And I want to choose the right one. Um, right. It's the revised, it's 6A1 revised site plan application underscore Kent Barnes. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we um, accept waivers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, and I look for a second. Second. Great. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Daryl. Um, any discussions on the waivers? Then all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. And that motion carries. Okay. All right, thanks everybody. All right, Wes, you're up if uh, you're ready. So with the waivers, um, I would move that we uh, approve application 09-23C and 10-23SP, Kent Center LLC, 9 Maple Street, map 9, block 42, lot 35, installation of EV chargers with uh, two conditions that uh, one that uh, concrete um, uh, stops be put in front of each charger and that, um, what was the second that, we, that you mentioned? The shared, updated shared parking. The updated, that, uh, that the, the uh, applicant um, uh, submit an updated shared um, uh, parking agreement. And a second? Second. Second. Okay, great. Adam Beach to it, Daryl. Um, <laughs> Early um, bird gets the worm. Any more discussion? Um, all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Aye. And that motion carries. Um, okay, so. Uh, so Lee, you'll get in touch with Ty and she'll let you know what the next steps are for, uh, um, for what your next steps are before you can get started. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think, you know, I think uh, it's, thanks for putting together a, uh, a, a well thought out and complete application. It makes our job easier. Thank you. Okay, so then uh, um, let's move on to agenda item 6B2. Um, which is the application number 05-22, I'm sorry, let me start over. Application number 05-23C, Kent Green, LLC, John Casey applicant for Landmark Lane, Map 19, Block 42, Lot 43, uh, change of use from artist studio to retail. Um, and I will turn this over really quickly, I think, to Ty to let us know if there's any any concerns um, or if there's anything you want to tell us. Yep. No, no concerns. I suspect that you've been th through this quite a few times. Um, just, you know, a basic change of use in that area. It sounds like this business is already there. It's just moving to a different unit. And I believe John Casey is on to talk about it a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. Hey John, you want to jump on and uh, and and show us your handsome face and tell us what you what's going on? <laughs> well, I don't know how to bring up my uh, handsome face. I just unmuted, and I think that's all the technological chops I have right now. But um, having said that, the uh, tenant uh, who was in 
uh, number building number 12 at Green Pastures Lane uh, expanded twice and then uh, had to move out of the building to a larger headquarters. Their business is doing really well. And uh, they so we had a vacancy and they moved from 2,000 square feet into 3,000 square feet, about 80 feet away. And um, nothing much changed for the business except they had more room. And um, I, I think it's a compatible use. Uh, again, they were approved three years ago as a tenant for the same use. They're just doing it in a little bit larger way. Um, thanks, John. Um, do any of the commissioners have anything, any comments or concerns for, uh, for the applicant? I'll make a motion that we accept application 05-23C Kent Green LLC for Landmark Lane. Map 19, block 42. Block there were 42. actually, I'm sorry to interrupt, there's waivers as well. For those. Oh. Uh, waivers, I, I, I can't tell you uh, what they are offhand. I honestly don't remember, um, but nothing physically is changing on the envelope of the building. We're not removing any soil from the, you know, from the site, everything is, built and has been built for many years. So there would be no apparent change uh, except for a sign on the door to anybody, you know, who witnessed this, this move across the parking lot. But so, well, there's a, uh, you're asking for waivers on three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, I make a motion that we accept those waivers. Okay. And second. Second. Thanks, Wes. Did I miss that? Uh, anyway, um, thanks, Adam. Thanks, Wes. Um, so, with regard to the waivers, are there um, any? Is there any, any more discussion? Uh, then, all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. And that motion carries. Alice, you and I on that? Oh, sorry. Okay, <laughs> great, great. That motion is so, so just, everybody's voted. Um, and then now for the motion, Adam. I'll make the motion for applicate, that we accept application 0523C, Kent Green LLC, for Landmark Lane, map 19, block 42, lot 43, change of use from artist studio to retail. Second. Great. Thanks, Wes. Thanks, Adam. Um, any further discussion? Then all those in favor, so signify by saying aye or raising your hand. And there we go. That's everybody. Good. Okay. Most that, that and that motion carries. Um, I want to just take a, a, a just a quick pause to remind um, Chris that you are allowed to participate, and we are encouraged to participate in the. Uh, in the discussions as an alternate, as a non-voting member, um, you are, um, during, during the public hearing, there's, there's, there's uh, some rules that say that you, that once the public hearing is closed, then, then you can't participate. But now that we're out, we're past the public hearing, you can participate um, or not at your, at your pleasure. Yeah, just listening in tonight, because, you know, newbie. <laughs> Great. I just wanted to just want to make sure make sure you knew that uh, that we wouldn't ignore you if you spoke. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. So then, moving on to uh, to agenda item six B three. This is application number 07-23 C Kent Green LLC John Casey applicant to Green Pastures Lane Map nineteen Block forty two Lot forty three uh, change of use from retail to personal service um, and. Ty, I'll give you the same opportunity. Is there anything you need to tell us? Or yeah, no, I mean, it, it, again, this looks good. I mean, the part I checked up parking and it's the same for retail and personal service or this kind of retail and personal service. So I, I don't see any concerns here. And this application has waivers as well. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So we'll make a motion that we accept waivers three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Great. So since we've got a motion, let's have a second, maybe. Yeah, I think Carol did that. Yeah. Okay, great. While I was talking. 
Um, <laughs> thanks, Adam. Thanks, Daryl. Um, We're moving fast here, buddy. <laughs> not used to it. Let's uh, have a vote on the motions, unless there's anything that anybody wants to say about the motions, about the waivers, then all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. And that motion carries. Um, before we go on to uh, John, we said since nice to see you. Um, is there anything that you need to tell us about this before we move on? No, I don't think so. The, this is a S theologist. Um, I can't tell you that I know exactly what that is, except that it's um, skin care. And uh, in, in, uh, as a personal service. And so they, she, this woman has uh, been in business for a few years in Washington and she wanted a place in Kent uh, because she thought it provided uh, a, a broader base of uh, exposure to potential clients. And um, she's governed, this practice is governed by uh, Torrington Area Health. And uh, she has or she has applied for, and I'm certain will be uh, granted a cosmetologist's license. So, that, so they are regulated and governed by the governed by the state of Connecticut, and so um, she's in the process of getting that. That's okay, true. thanks, John. You're, you're um, welcome. Thank you. Any more discussion by the the commission? I'll make a motion that we accept application zero seven twenty three C. Kent Green LLC to Green Pastures Lane, map 19, block 42, lot 43, change of use from retail to personal service. Second. Great. Thanks, Adam and Wes. Um, any further discussion? Then, although, hold on, let me move over. Um, all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. And that motion carries. Okay, thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks very much, everybody. Um, okay, moving on to 6B4. This is application number 16-23C, um, Veronique and Oliver Kinsey, 28 Mountain, 28 Iron Mountain Road, map 10, block 41, lot 23, in-ground swimming pool with pool lights, relocation of septic system, access road, and associated site work and tree cutting. Um, so Ty, I'll turn, I'll, I'll, I'll let you comment first. Yes, yeah, so the application is before you because the entire property is in the horizon line. Um, I, you know, did a staff report on it, did ask for a little bit more information regarding the specific location of the trees that will be taken down. I think the majority of the work is in an open area, but there are some trees that are associated that are going to be <laughs> well so um and i i believe veronique is here i think that uh dobson is here for the pool as well all right then why don't we turn it over to the applicant um and i see veronique um i see devon you're going to be speaking um as as a part of the application if there's any questions i guess <laughs> okay he's I'm here if you need me. Okay, great. Um, then, um, why don't you walk us through it, Veronique? Veronique. Veronique, yes. Hi. Veronique. Um, I mean, uh, this is the first time doing, well, actually, this is the second time because we built the Screenton porch. So, yeah, we're putting in a pool and uh, it's uh, in the backyard, which is all open space. And in order to put it in the backyard in the open space, we have to relocate our septic to a more conducive area and our my septic engineer bill colby is on here as well if you have any questions there but his plan has been approved by kathy weber um and yeah so we're just you know i'm not planning on cutting any particular trees down other than i think there's uh one that the surveyor found that is uh one 12 inch oak uh further down where the septic where the leaching field is um and that's about it the pool's going in in an open area
How is the grading going to be handled? It looks like it's fairly steep there. Um, where the pool location is, it's uh, I think it's less than a four foot difference. Yeah, Wes, good question. We're going to, you know, like any project, we're going to see how much dirt we take out of there. Right. Uh, there very well could be some ledge rock. So we're not really sure how much uh, fill we have to play with, but we'll certainly be grading that on the downward slope. Right. The um, the contour intervals on this uh, map are what? Or are those two foot con contour intervals uh, on the on the map that you submitted? Um, let me. It's very small. Let me open it up. Yes, they are two feet. Two. Okay. Um, Bill Gavel, who's putting in the septic, uh, right. said he estimates about 125 cubic yards of fill needed, which was on the application. Just as a personal note, uh, I know that the pool is aligned with the house. I can understand architecturally how that, that works. But um, um, if the pool runs with the grade um, along the grade lines, there's less grading involved uh, by doing so. It means you'd have to, to um, uh, turn the pool, the uh, north side back towards the east or yeah, towards yeah, the it's east. Yeah, it's, it's a funky, it's a funky backyard. I yeah. think I, either way, you know, we're looking at retaining walls and well, that, pushing dirt here. That's my question. Are, are you going to entertain the grading through uh, a retaining wall, through, through retainage? Yes. Yeah. In the application, there's a uh, site, as a, there's a rough landscape plan that shows where the location of the retaining wall will be. I missed that. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I had trouble with that too, Wes, that uh, I, I couldn't. For some reason, I said that I couldn't download that file to uh, to get it into a, a, an easily viewable. So I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm looking at it from the Google Drive, um, and there is a retaining wall um, between the house and the pool. Um, but I don't see, to your point, I don't see any provision for anything downgrade. So I, you know, I don't see any. Um, any revision to the um, uh, to the contours, unless I'm missing that too. I don't think I am. Yeah, it's basically. I mean, the the backyard is all sloping, so you know she comes off of her deck, and we're going to try to create this um, basically a usable backyard because right now it's really not um, through a, a series of retaining walls you know, three feet high sort of thing. So it, it, so it makes sense for me to see those retaining walls on, on, on a revised grading plan um, with the, you know, the contours, right? So what's what you think, at least what you think you're going to be doing now. Yeah. I mean, from a horizon line perspective, the pool is going below the house. Yeah. The pool is below the house level. So it really shouldn't, it, there really, really shouldn't be concern over grading and whatnot. It won't, it shouldn't impact the views or anything like that because there's no trees or anything being affected. But you're going to be, you're maybe going to be affecting the, the view within that horizon line district. Yes? How so? <laughs> well, well, right. well, Ben? Well, so the, the, rule, the rule is determined by whether it can be seen from a roadway. Which it cannot. Because and that's, and that's the like big question. 100 feet below the yeah. top of the tallest oak tree that we have on our property. Like it's very much set in. You can't even see our house from. Yeah, we're, we're banking it into a, into a slope beneath the house, yeah. uh, you know, amongst the trees, if you will. So and that's the next question then. Can you see it from Richards? No, you can't. No. You can't Lower even Ridge. you can't even see our house from Richards Road. The only place that you could, I didn't drive up Iron Mountain Road to look. That would be the only place that you could possibly see it. And I don't think you can see it. From, from where? 
from well, Iron as Ron, you can't see our backyard the from the Iron Mountain Road. You can on your backyard down the hill, right? Yeah, our house is at the top, and then everything yeah, else is way. everything else is subterranean from the house. But Matt, there's no higher point that you could that you can see down down there at all. Hmm. Not from Richards, and not from further in either direction. Yeah, and, and 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 what I'm understanding from that is you'd see you from looking up, you can't see either, right? So, so I mean that that's really what, what you know, looking down is 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 one thing when you're on the top of the hill, but all, all of the all of the the other people, no one can see, see no one can see our backyard, our deck, our house from Richards Road or Oak Ridge or South Spectacle any of those you cannot you can't see us even in the winter <laughs> and what about the little bit of clearing that you're doing to relocate the septic field um you know you, may, you mentioned that uh the, the one 12 inch oak is that is that potentially visible that that removal visible from anywhere oh, we have hundreds and hundreds of huge oak trees in our backyard. Um, I don't believe that one in particular. We have much, much larger ones in the vicinity as well that are, will not be affected. Um, again, the surveyor noted the one particular tree. Uh, I truly do not believe that it will have an impact on the overall tree. Right, that's not the question. The okay. question is, can you see that tree um, from anywhere and will that, um, can you see it? I mean, it's, I, I understand that you've got, you know, thousands, maybe millions of giant <laughs> oak trees up there, but you're in the horizon. Line. How would you be able to identify that particular tree? I just, I'm asking, cause I don't know how I would be able to say whether or not that particular tree would be visible from Richards road or Oak Ridge. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's, it's, it's not it's, a, it's not a distinctive tree. It's not like the one spruce. It's not the one giant elm. I'm just I'm not sure how I would find that one. You can't <laughs> see it. There, there's hundreds of trees on a similar grade in front of it. It also goes just the property. Um, the house is here. It goes down. It goes down another level, which is roughly where the septic is, and then it goes down again. And then it goes up a little bit and then down all the way down to Oak Ridge. So I'm not sure exactly where this is, but it doesn't fall at a high point. Like that. I, to be honest, Matt, I, I, I would have to drive out there to look. I, I really meant to do that today. Um, and I just kept forgetting to turn down there. But um, I, I don't believe, I honestly don't believe you can see it from anywhere, but I couldn't tell you that you can't until I go look. Well, I. I've been up there. I've been up there. Yeah. It's very private. It's very private. I've been up there. I don't think you can see it. I think in this scenario, putting the pool in an already disturbed location from the septic and shifting the septic is probably better than leaving the septic where it is and trying to install a pool further down. I, I think putting a pool anywhere else on the site would probably be more disruptive than installing this septic system at the lower elevation. I have a question. I, I seem to be having trouble with maps tonight. Um, is this property all the way to the end of Iron Mountain Road or is it no? It's where- Let me, I'll we're share my screen. Uh, Karen and show you where it is on, on the <laughs> Thank you. maps. Yeah. It's, it's after the curve, Karen. When you go down Iron Road, Iron Mountain Road, the road curves to the left. After the curve on the right, it's this, it's the second to last property on the right, not including the one at the very end of the road. All right, Karen, can you see my screen now? I sure can. And that answers the question because I walk Richards Road frequently. And I do see a house, but I don't believe it's this one. I see the one that I think is all the way to the end on the same side of the street. Oh, this one. Yeah. Just that I just wanted to know. Okay. Yeah. And it's really, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's really just a question of what is that, what does that view shed look like now? And what is that view shed going to look like after, after the project is complete? And it sounds, you know, it's, it sounds like, 
um, the pool, you know, certainly the pool is going in an, in an, in an undisturbed area. Um, and if you can't see it, then, then we shouldn't worry about the retaining walls. I mean, I mean, for you to say that you don't have to show me the retaining walls is a little bit, you know, it makes me a little bit irritated, but I understand it's a cleared space. Um, and what I'm understanding from the, um, from the balance of the commission who were familiar with that view, um, that the, at least the indication is that the, that, that the oak tree removal um, will not be visible or should not be visible or won't amount to much. If they say, is that what I'm understanding from the, from Wes and Daryl? Yes. Yep. Mayor Nick did um, share some pictures that are in the file as well from the bottom of her property, kind of looking up. I don't know if that would be helpful to you to get an understanding of um, Um, yeah, I, I I don't think it can be. I mean, I walk there today and I look up on that because you see the fields and then you see the houses on that ridge and I did not see it. I only see the ones at, at the tippy end of the road. So I think it's probably a, absolutely fine. Um, so these are the pictures that Ty was just this is this is a picture across the backyard. Is that right? That's essentially where the pool is going to be, yeah, right. um, just to show you that it was an open space. And you can see the density of the woods beyond, um, just to give you a sense. Uh, and then the lower picture is me standing roughly where the leaching field is going to be, uh, looking back at the house. So you can sort of get an idea of the, of the grade. And there's, there's, there's mostly, there's a, a few smaller trees that aren't as tall um some of the other ones but a lot of our big oaks are the big huge double ones that are probably you know three or four feet wide <laughs> that uh they're the they're the they're big ones that you can see okay um are there any more comments from the uh from the commission Um, there are waivers to be discussed or accepted. Um, this is the one that I had trouble uh, downloading. So yeah, the waivers would be on the on the um, six before horizon line dash Kinsey 28 iron mountain file. So I'll move to accept, um, waivers seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, then regarding the waivers, all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and are saying aye. And that motion carries. And then, um, were there any more discussion regarding the application? There's, you, we usually bring up the subject of lights mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that's not relevant because of where this is behind the house and so forth, but. Yes. So the application and correct me if I'm wrong, Ver Veronique, that uh, the only lights that you're adding are lights in the pool? Yeah, because of the proximity to the house, uh, we don't really feel like we need any additional, you know, landscape lighting or anything like that. Then I'll make a motion that we accept application 16-23C, Veronique and Oliver Kinsey, 28 Iron Mountain Road, map 10, block 41, lot 23, in-ground swimming pool with pool lights, relocation of septic system, access road, and associated site work and tree cutting. 
Second. Uh, thanks, Adam. Thanks, Wes. Um, any further discussion? Then I'll call the vote. All those in favor, so signify by raising your hand and or saying aye. Aye. And that motion carries. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a good night. Um, all right. So we're going to move on to agenda item number 7A, which is commissioner training. And then, um, so this 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 falls out of the... the um, Oh, I just, the word just flew out of my head. It falls out of the uh, uh, the new law that says that we have to be trained. <laughs> yeah, the, new, the new legislation requires that you get four hours of training in by March 1st, 2024. Uh, one of those hours has to be with regard to affordable housing. Um, the COG, the, um, the Northwest COG is and sending out some information to kind of be a little bit helpful and give you some different um, training opportunities. I don't know if you guys have taken advantage of all the classes at UConn Clear. Um, usually that's the first step of when you become a commissioner. Quite often you do that land use academy. Um, so some of those things might be redundant. But there's other things out there that we're looking into. Um, Matt and I had a little bit of conversation about maybe having Tom Hennick come in and do an FOI session. Um, this wouldn't just be for you. The ZBA members also require that training so we can do like a group thing. Um, and I believe he offers that free. Um, also we have, you know, Mike Ziska, we have a you know, wealth of um, experts that we can um, ask to come in and do training sessions as well. So um, as long as you put in the hours, um, really the selectmen just have to sign off at the end to, you know, to send in the confirmation. Um, so there's a variety of different ways we can achieve this. You guys are super busy right now. You've got a lot of things going on. I was kind of thinking that maybe once you settled down a bit um, after the regulations and the um, new subdivision regulations are done and zoning regulations are done and I don't know, you have lots of special meetings going on all the time. It seems like a lot for you, but um, maybe the second half of the year will be a little quieter. Does this past training that we've had count? No, no, it's no, yeah. no. Unless you've done it between, you know, since the 1st of January, since the 1st of this year. Yeah. No, it's been a few years. This is like continuing education. Yeah. It's required for professions. Yes. And what's the consequence if you don't do it? Has not been any consequence that has put, been put forth yet. So um, I think they're still thinking about that. The legislation just requires it. They haven't said what would happen if you thumbed your nose at it. But they do. And we we are on our own recognizance, Wes, on that. So it's, we, it's, we, You're we right. just have to tell Ty that- Just like you know, continuing education. That's yeah. right. We tell Ty that we're done, exactly and right. she says, "Okay, we're done." And she says, "Once we're all done, she tells the the the, the select board that we're uh, that we're all up to date." Oh, um, our um, our what do you call her? Our ex facto member, <laughs> ex officio. <laughs> ah, there she is. <laughs> Sorry, I've been multitasking here in the background. Um, so I was down a bit of a sustainable CT rabbit hole. Um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago last, I don't remember at this point, um, and ended up on the clear site and saw the land use Academy and um, took a couple of the initial modules that are like self paced. And it was super doable. Um, I was, I was surprised. And then I signed up for the three module advanced one that is sort of a live Zoom. And they had one, um, the one just today that was four to 5.30. Um, and again, it was super, use, super doable. So, um, and they record them. So now you wouldn't need to go to a live one. You can just go on the website and watch them anytime you want. So just, wanted to offer up sort of the 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 less onerous side of 
of this onerous task that is now before you all <laughs> um, for the already huge commitment that you make to these commission commissions. But it, I, I was pleasantly surprised that it was um, more doable than I thought. <laughs> and I have come away obviously with a huge, huge wealth of information. It's been great. So just wanted to offer that up. Okay. Thanks, Gene. Yeah, so we uh, the majority of the of the commission members have taken that that uh, um, and we did it live. You know, we did this you know many years ago, right? So we took it. We went um, to the clear wherever it was over in Torrington when we sat down um, and we took the basic course and some of us took the advanced course um, in person too. So I agree, Gene, that they're that they are uh, um, they're good to do. Um, I think I would suggest that we all do them again. And as Jean says, they're they're really easy to um, they're re really easy to, to 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 flip through and get a refresher on the basic. Um, and uh, my plan is to take the advanced sometime between now and you know sometime now between the summer to retake that. Um, but Ty, I think you're absolutely right that that let's uh, for a, for a formal in person um, maybe. Uh, um, let's wait until the fall, you know, late until September, October, maybe, yep. you know, after the summer, but before hunting starts up again. <laughs> Sounds good. Any comments or questions from the balance of the commission? Um, all right, so then I'm gonna move on to... Um, if I could just interject. Um, sure. You, you missed one item on the agenda and this might be a quick, Good time to just loop back to it. 5B2 was the regular member vacant position. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you have anybody to put forward, but I just think you should acknowledge it. Thanks, Ty. Yeah, I definitely skipped right over that. That's a nice catch. All right. Um, does anybody have anything to say about filling that, that vacant position? I know that some of us, um, some members of the commission have been thinking really hard about it. Um, others have been thinking about it in passing. Um, does anybody have any comments at this time? Uh, I will say that just need a little more time. Uh, I've got some really interesting leads and in working on a number of people and um, not ready to name anyone until they're ready to be named, so to speak. Um, but I, I'm very optimistic we're going to find some really dedicated people. <laughs> I don't right. know if that helps. I don't know if that helps, but I am definitely on the path to finding something. Thank you very much for doing that, Alice, for spending the time that you're, you're spending on trying to find us a, a good candidate. It, it takes some education. And I, um, I think, uh, you know, this is an advantage of Zoom that if someone is out there right now, they could be listening to this evening and learning and seeing firsthand what we really do. Well, because when I joined, there was no such thing. You had to just hold your breath and jump in. And um, besides taking the courses we just talked about. Anyway. Great. Thanks. Um, all right, getting back to our regularly scheduled uh, program. <laughs> um, uh, agenda item eight, report of officers and committees, 8A, um, resolutions, denial versus approval. So this is on the, this is on the agenda because um, I wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page with regard to um, how we handle resolutions on somewhat what, what I term major applications. Um, Ty, do you want to do you want to jump in and, and talk a little bit about sure. where we landed? Yeah, sure. Um, so Matt had asked me, you know, what I what I've done in the past or what I've known of in the past. And I kind of pulled out a portion of Robert's rules just to kind of back up what I know. And so Generally, what traditionally happens is that you always offer up your positive motion first, um, and then 
the reason why you would do your motion to denial is to more or less, you, you could have that prepared and ready. So that you go forward with a positive. It's always start with positive with the um, intention of possibly approving something. If that fails, it, it is denied, but then you can go to your motion of denial because that will state the specific reasons why you're denying it. And it's great. It's a great way to create a record in case there's any court challenges. Um, so it's a good habit to get into, but you should always remember to start with positive. At least that's the way I've always been trained. And that's what Robert Rules guides you to do. So thanks that, that's that that's great time you know sweet I, I wasn't quite sure that that was what you know that that's that was the deal um but i definitely after having conversations with ty i think that that's um i think she's absolutely correct um but if you would humor me um i would like to share my screen again and talk through these 10 items can everybody see that okay Kind of small. That's it's very small. Let me see. Can you, uh, yeah. Um, on this application, I don't know how to do it. You know what I could do is uh, should be Control Plus. Hey. <laughs> wow. There is. Happy to serve. <laughs> awesome. Okay, is that better for everybody? Yeah. All right. So what what I what we started out by saying is that uh, and where we were somewhat landed was um, a suggestion of standard operating procedure for the commission. Um, so number one is when requested by the commission, the land use administrator will prepare a resolution of approval. Um, this request is generally made in cases where commission feels that it's necessary to add conditions to the approval of an application. So that's one. It doesn't always get done, but it gets done when any of the commission, when any commission member believes that it's that it's it's uh, would be helpful, then we can ask and and Ty will um, prepare the resolution of approval and denial. Uh, rev resolution of approval. In most cases, this is number two. When a resolution of approval is requested by the commission, a resolution of denial will also be prepared. Um, and this is what, uh, you know, we, we had this situation just recently with the uh, major home occupation where Adam asked for um, and Ty prepared the resolution of denial prior to the meeting. Um, number three, the resolution of approval will be reviewed by the commission and revised as necessary prior to a motion being made. Um, and this is where Ty, Ty's comment from just a minute ago is important because our commission should um work towards a resolution of approval first and then if that resolution of approval is rejected or denied then we can move on to the resolution of denial which would um really indicate why we were denying the application so we would be to positive denial after after a negative approval um so um so number three is the resolution of approval will, will be reviewed by the commission and revised as necessary prior to a motion. And if requested by any commission member, the resolution of denial will also be reviewed by the commission and revised as necessary prior to a motion being made, right? So if you remember the, when we were talking about that, that major home occupation, Adam requested that we review the um, that we review the resolution of denial um, I told him that I wasn't sure it was necessary because the balance of the commission was, it seemed to me feeling that they were leaning towards, they were leaning one way, but I think that because Adam had suggested it, that, that in the future, anybody who requests that we read it and, and review it, that we just do it without question. Um, and then number five, any member can make a motion, which after being seconded by another member will be discussed. Um, and this is what I was telling Chris before. Alternate members may not move or second a motion relating to an application heard during a public hearing, nor may they participate in discussion regarding the motion after the public hearing is closed, right? Um, if a motion in favor of a resolution of approval carries the majority of the vote, then the application is approved. Um, if a mover in favor of a resolution of approval does not carry, 
um, then the application is denied. Um, if it's not made clear during the discussion, members should give their reasons for voting against the motion. If a motion in favor of a resolution of denial carries a majority of votes, then the application is denied. Um, if a motion in favor of resolution does not, of denial does not carry a majority of votes, then a motion in favor of a resolution must be made. So I think that this is off the table because we're saying a resolution of approval has to come first. Um, so number 10, and this comes from, this comes from our um, bylaws, that a minimum of four votes is required um, and abstentions don't count. So um, if we've got four members of the commission, four members constitutes a, uh, um, four members constitutes a quorum. Um, if all four members vote, then it's a valid vote. If three, three of those four members vote and one's an abstention, then that only counts as three votes and, and that's not a valid vote. And then we have, to, we have to do something there. In that very special case, we have to table the application until we have more people participating. Do those rules, do those sort of standard operating procedures make sense to everybody? Great. So that's how we'll proceed. Um, I don't think we need a motion for that. I think this was just sort of to get us all. Can, can you data. send those to us, please? Yes. Um, so, Ty, do you still have this? I do. I'll get it. I'll get it out to everybody. Um, so I think that I, I think that the only change that needs to be made is is that uh, is that number nine mm -hmm. um, comes out. Okay, good. Yep. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And any more discussion? Anybody have anything else to say about that SOP? Okay, great. Other communication and correspondence. Agenda item number nine, getting down there. Administrative permits and certificates of compliance. Any comments or questions for Ty um, from the information that was in the packet? Um, 9B, the quarterly newsletter. Ty, anything that uh, you want to highlight? No, nothing really stood out. I read it, but I'm, you know, <laughs> nothing stood out. It's there for you if you want to read it. Okay, uh, 9C, the Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Association. I think that's what it is. No. Yep. Yes? Yes. Yes. Um, Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies. Agencies. This is that yearly meeting, annual conference that they have. Um, it's your invitation if you'd like to join. Um, it's also a length of service awards presentation if you have anybody you want to nominate. Um, so let me know if that's something you're interested in um, going to and I can get you signed up to go. So this is the executive director of this organization is, is, is Stephen Byrne. And Stephen is the guy who runs the, uh, the, the clear, the Yukon clear Academy. And so he's, he's the guy who, who puts together that, that training that we were talking about earlier. And he'll, he'll actually come out and train you personally. If you, if you'd like, he offers, you know, private classes to, you know, the commissioners, if you have a topic he wants to, you want him to speak on. I went to this last year, and it was, uh, you know, this this was when they're talking about the 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 new um, legislation that came out after the the twenty twenty one legislative session, um, and it was interesting, you know, that's where where they talked about parking and the and this new training protocol. Um, so I thought it was worthwhile. Um, although I did go, I I didn't go for all the the hoopla, and, um, just went for the talking after the dinner. Um, okay, so um, agenda item 9D is the desegregated CT request. You have any comments on that, Ty, for us? No, I mean, I just received this. They, um, they're, they're asking to come before you um, if, you know, to make some kind of presentation. So if this is something 
you're interested in, I can, you know, schedule a time for them to come to one of your meetings. Otherwise, you know, we can respectfully decline as well. Any, any member of the commission have anything, any comments or questions? I, for one, thought about this quickly, but then didn't have the bandwidth. So I'd like to keep this on the agenda for next month, if that's okay, and we can make a um, an affirmative um, declaration sure. um, next month. Is that all right with everybody? Okay, um, and agenda item 9E is... Um, Kent Falls Brewing Company uh, notice the possible violation. This is this is a, a, a discussion, um, generally a discussion that we want to have with um, the commission and the applicant. Um, I am not sure that it's appropriate for the public to comment because it's not a public hearing, but I would be willing to hear what the balance of the commission had to say or tie if you had any opinion. Um, well, I mean, just as far as the reason why it's before you, as you may know that um, Barry had gone before the selectmen to ask for a food truck on the property, um, that kind of triggered some questions about the existing special permit that's in place and what was allowed and what wasn't allowed. And um, I was asked to dig into the file and kind of, you know, figure out what that was. Um, there have been some modifications along the way, um, and basically I came out of that with some things that looked like violations, so I sent out this um, notice of possible violation to get this kind of conversation going. It kind of calls out the different um, issues that I saw, and, you know, maybe you guys can provide some clarity on that, and I know um, Barry and David both came forward very quickly um, to, you know, explain and talk about it and try to come into conformance with whatever was required and whatever was agreed, agreed to and maybe you know move forward with a, a better understanding. All right, thanks Ty. So there are, I think, two special permits um, on the property that are germane to the discussion and one is the, uh, one is the tasting um, and one is the and, the, and the tasting came about as a modification to the original special permit to allow for um, a tasting room on site. Um, and the other one is the farm stand. Um, that was a separate special permit application that came in between the, 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 the first um, approval for the brewery and the second approval, the second and the modification to the brewery to allow for um, for tastings, um, and then uh, just as another quick note, um, some of the and I'll call it testimony because it was in the public arena that that uh, that um, Barry you gave um, during the selectmen's meeting, the select board meeting um, indicated that that uh, both of those things, both of the, the approvals were um, uh, were being, for lack of a better word, violated. So um, I think that what we should do now is ask Barry to let us know what he's doing with the tasting room and what he's doing with the farm stand um, to see whether we can't bring him back into compliance with his special permits. Sure. I have a question, a quick question, Matt, before we proceed. Is it a farm stand or is it a farmer's market? It's a farm stand. What they have approval for is a farm stand. And it's not a farm store. It's not a farmer's market. It's a farm stand. And it's important, it's important to remember that when they came before us um, for the 
for the special permit for a farm stand, we were operating under the, the regulations that were from 1993. So you have to, in order to understand what their, how their approval, um, what they have approval to do, you have to go back to those regulations and, and look at the definition of a farm stand per those regulations. Okay, um, then does any other, do any commissioners have anything else uh, they'd like to say? Then I'll, Barry, can you explain to us what you're doing? Sure. So, uh, I mean, as soon as we got this letter, we have only done everything explicitly to, I think, what my conversation with Ty matched your understanding of what was allowed. Um, so people can come in and have a two ounce, four two ounce pours. There's a freezer in the front of the tasting room, which has our chicken and pork available to purchase for offsite consumption. Uh, it's all frozen and people can buy beer to go. Uh, that's the extent of anything happening right now. Um, I think the issues that I had spoken about that caused concern was the, the market night that we ran. Um, and as it's written in here in the letter, um, yeah, I mean, so that the answer is that is what we are doing. I assume that's not what we wanted, what you wanted to talk about is like what the issues that I can you be specific, at least for I guess for me, what I said that is causing concerns and either we can go point by point on the let on the letter you sent me or, you know. Um, um, well, it, 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 it came to our attention um, that um, that it was really that that's that the brewery is really behaving as a bar, um, which is so, not what you had permission to do. So, I mean, I, I would certainly not consider that it is being um, used as a bar. We only serve our beer. We don't have happy hours. We have limited um, hours of operation. Um, there's really, we don't, there's really nothing other than the presence of alcohol being consumed which either way there would be is something that is i, I think like a bar or me meets the concerns over a bar so could you define what you mean by acting like a bar no i i no no i i i i want to convey that the with the the, the special permit um allows for um a two ounce pour um and the spirit of the of the approval was that at the time you were not going to have any more than four different types of beer um for tasting and it would not be any more than four two ounce pours in order for everybody to taste the beer that you had produced so now um you know, it's it's not really a question, as you said, as as you just said, it's not really a question of of four or two ounce pours. It's a question of somebody going in and tasting your beer and deciding to buy a growler of beer and driving away. Whether it's whether it's one two ounce pour of one single kind of beer or it's four two ounce pours of four different kinds of beer, they're tasting the beer, they're buying the growler, and they're leaving. So. I never. I don't know that I understood. I will say that is a that is there is a yes. So the four beers, like I, as I was rereading the minutes from the original meetings, the four beers is something that stood out to me as. I, I never imagined we were limited to only four beers. Four beers. This was early in the brewery. I think there's contextually, um, yeah, I, I'd never, I did not imagine you regulating the amount of types of beer that the number of beers that we made and offered. Okay, then I, th I, I think that you have to go back and, and look at, at what you, 
You have to, you have to go back and look at, at, at what you're permitted to do via the special permit. And if you think that there's, there's some, um, there, there's some misunderstanding, um, then you should, then, then you have to come back and talk to us. Um, sure. But you have to, you have to take, you have to take the, 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 the information that you provided to us at the time um, and incorporate that into the understanding of the special permit. Sure. So, I, I mean, that is something I would like to address with you. I assume it needs to be at a public hearing next month. Um, for the time being, we're in full compliance with this from here until something changes, right? Like, if there was any misunderstanding, of that element of the permit, there is no longer, um, you know, so like that, that, that is totally fine. I'd rather not re re look at what does four beers or five beers and how many ounces per beer, whatever it might be. Like we're sticking to the letter of the rules of what's there. Um, and I would, I don't know if this is the forum to request the special the public hearing to address this or make a new request or that needs to be done by official letter or what, but I would, I would happily address that with you. Or if you are open to discussing it here, I'm open to discussing it and kind of talking about the substance of, of things. Yeah, I would, I, I, I would suggest, and I'll talk, I'd, I'd look for, for comment and input from the balance of the commission, but I would suggest that if you want to do something that's different than then is approved by the by the special permit. Then you should apply for a modification to the special permit, um, okay. and then that way you can you can tell us exactly what it is that you want to do, sure. right? And then and then we can we can look at that as a modification of the special permit. It'll be a public hearing. Um, we'll ask all the questions that we have to ask as part of that uh, as part of the the site plan approval and and, and special permit application, um, and then we will uh, ask for a public comment, and then we will. Um, deliberate and decide how we want to manage. Okay, I think mean, I think uh, that's the best way. Which I, I I don't I don't mean to say that that what you want to do, um, I don't mean to say at all that what you want to do is objectionable, um, but what you have been doing is not doesn't you know satisfy the letter of the. Uh, the I, I I totally appreciate what you're saying, and and I hope. You know, upon receiving this letter, there's obviously like a lot of concern. If you think we're in violation, that's the last thing we ever want to be. Um, you know, the you said in the beginning that my going forward for to the addressing the food truck ordinance was what kind of brought this about. And I hope our record in other matters just shows that we do care for the process. And you know, in the in the food truck issue, even I went first to zoning and then to was told land uh the first select person's office talked to people in the town and then went back in a way that i thought was certainly very thoughtful and all of it so and talked honestly like that i wouldn't have said anything if i didn't think what we were doing was all in the spirit and okay according to our zoning rule so i appreciate the uh, approach that you're taking with this and would very happily put in a, a request for uh you know for to change that and we can discuss that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that 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 that's great. I mean, that that satisfies me. You know, one one of the things that 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 piqued my ears um, during in listening to the recording of the the select board meeting was the the description of the of the items that you were selling in the farm stand, um, which um, doesn't quite equate to uh, things produced on the farm, right? So it's the you know, so that's that. That was a, a couple of things that you said in the spirit of this openness and honest honesty, which which I applaud you for, Bear. Um, it's just you know, it's it's that came out and seemed to um, indicate to us that that we were a little bit off the rails here, and we just wanted to bring it, bring us every everybody back into an understanding. Totally, totally, and and, and you know, the if I had I went <laughs> I, reading the. Uh, it's you know where we have the 155,000 gallon cap on production, and we're realistically capped well below that just by seeing knowing what the land can take, you know, our well and 
all of the things that I don't need to like ramble on about, but you know, definitely it's hard to get a hundred percent of everything right super early on before you do it. And uh, I, yeah, I have nothing but being forthcoming about the things we're doing. I do have some questions about the kind of farmer's market. And I understand there's seems to be some level of precedent. I would, we would like to do that again within compliance, right? I don't know if it's something that is special permit. I understand there are existing regulations about farmer's markets in rural areas. Is that there, there's not, no. but I think that I think that that's something that you can you can work back and forth with uh, on with Ty. Okay, um, and you might even be able to work both of these things into the same special permit. I I I don't know. So so Matt, I don't I don't know that the farmers market can be permitted unless you change the regulations to allow it in the rural area. Right. <laughs> no, I absolutely agree. I, I, I absolutely agree. So we're talking. The only thing that that Barry would be allowed to do is is have a farm stand, and he would have to, they they would have to um, comply with the farm stand regulations, the current farm stand regulations. Right. Is is the sorry? I don't mean to. Zoom is difficult. It's hard to know when people are fully stopped. Um, is the application that I believe the Kent Land Trust went through last year by any chance is that not precedent for a, a market in a rural area is that is that rural down there is that considered rural it's it's part of the rural zone yeah but it, no it's not precedence for it well i i might use the wrong word i apologize but the is is that another example of something a way that it could be done mm -mm. How did that happen? Um, I I'm not going to be able to pull up the, the the zoning. There's a section in the zoning that at the time we thought fit that use. Um, so I would look back to that use and see if you could make a pitch to us, Barry, that, that you fit within that. I, I, I will caution you on the, to the fact that we are, I think, pretty close to um, revising our regulation. Um, I, I, just, I don't want to get too further. Just take a look at the current regulations and see whether what you want to do would fit within there. Um, and uh, Ty, you could maybe I'll, I'll put in the right the, direction. It, I'll pull the file for the land trust approval if that's how that happened. You approved it, and and see if it compare it to Barry's situation. Yeah, I okay. think that's right. Was it because KLT was nonprofit? No. So let's look. Let's look back and see why why it happened, yeah. and not guess at it. We don't need to. Well, well guess part of it was there was such part of it was there was such a demand for that farmers market to find another location which was safer than where they were. Remember that? Yes. I think we should all go back and look at the record, or let Ty look back at the record, and and let Barry look at the record and see if he thinks he can fit a farmer's market into the regulations. Um, and I mean, at, I, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask, but would it be entertained to possibly change the regulations to allow for farmer's markets in the rural area? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it's, it's, it would be worth a discussion. I'm not sure how, how many legs that would get, um, based on what I understand from the direction that the commission is going with regard to, um, the, uh, the, the changes that we are contemplating and, and close to, I think, uh, uh, agreeing to. 
But again, I think that I, I think that there should be this this review of the regulation um, by Barry with some help from Ty to see whether whether he thinks he could find some way that the farmers market fits there um, if that's what you want to do. Um, and until then, we know that you have to be behaving as a as a farm stand selling items that are produced on the property within your um, within your liquor permit, right? I know those are separate things, but you know, it's, I don't think you can have growlers down in, uh, on the side of the road for people to just come in and drop ten dollars in the pot. Um, so, any comments from the commission? I think oh, Gary's that... going to come in and talk to us next month. I assume to about his special permit. Is that correct? Barry. Yes. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, and I think because of that, um, bec because of number one, um, Barry is, is generally agreeing um, that he's going to work within the, the confines of the, of the two special permits that he's got. Um, and because he's going to be coming forward with a, with a, a possible request for a, a modification of the special permit, the public will have a chance to weigh in at that point. Um, I think it's fair to uh, put that, that public commentary off until Barry actually makes his, uh, his application and we can, we can discuss it in, in, in our normal fashion. Is that fair? Does that sound fair to the balance of the commission? Yes. Okay, I almost want to make a motion. Can I ask one one final question? Of course, Alice. On this, um, uh, with regard to entertainment, I am a little bit confused. The regulations don't give a lot of guidance as to what's allowed where. Um, I, you know, spoke with Donna and she said the general rule was, you know, in the commercial area, if a business, you know, something was associated with a business that it would be, you know, obvious and entertainment would fit, that would be something that would be allowed. Otherwise, it has to be called out by the special permit. Um, and, but Barry did bring to my attention that on his liquor permit that was signed, um, you know, acoustic and magicians were allowed at um at the brewery so i think that he's extended beyond acoustic but is that something and magicians are they both still allowed you know i'm looking for your guidance because i'm not 100 percent confident on how you guys make those you know decisions what you want what what's your expectation with regard to entertainment I think that has to be spelled out in the special permit. I don't. I don't think that a liquor license trumps a special permit. Okay, so even acoustics is not permitted. Magicians are not permitted. Right. Okay. Understood. And and in in the commercial, just for future reference, in the commercial area, it is as long like. The fife, for instance, that would be fine. Right. In that case, it seems to be accessory to the use. Okay. Um, and those those uses are permitted um, by. It's not by right, but it's by um, administrative permit, right? And and because those are permitted outside of the special permit. Um, then they should be that then that then the entertainment is an accessory to the, the the primary use. I understand. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody else have any opinion about that? Since Ty's asking, okay. Um, so Barry, you have uh, do, you, do you have a clear a clear understanding of, of sort of where we are? I think so. Um... I will talk to Ty probably tomorrow about how to submit a request and then 
it's 10 days before the what is the time frame just i mean i can go over all this with ty tomorrow but just in general to be able to make sure we're on for a amendment or public hearing yeah i mean we have to notice it twice and then you have to post the sign um so it, you need to get in there pretty quickly okay. to get everything together for your the march meeting okay that won't be a problem Okay, and I would, uh, you know, before we move off this topic, I would thank um, the members of the public who, uh, who I believe um, would like to speak um, to stick around with us for uh, um, these couple of hours, and we'll um, um, likely talk about this um, in a month. Um, and then I would move on to uh, any other discussion, any other comments or questions or thoughts before we move along um then i would uh move on to agenda item agenda items 10 and 11 and wonder to tie um do we need to go into executive session is there anything to report um nothing of great substance i can give you a slight update if you if you're interested we had several uh we had several <laughs> meetings. Yeah. Uh, um, there's something new and I, I think I'd like to hear. There's nothing new. <laughs> if there's nothing new, then there's nothing new. Um, no, not really. Okay. All right. So we don't need to go into executive session, so we will not. Go into executive session if that's the pleasure of the commission. And then um, if that's the case, then we don't need to have the, uh, I don't think we do anyway, um, open sessions uh, number, agenda item numbers 12 and 13, um, pending litigation regarding the Roberta family or um, pending litigation regarding the uh, um, high watch recovery. They're on the agenda, so I think we have to table them both. Is that correct? So I'll make a motion that we table um, both item 12 and item 13. Second. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Daryl. Um, all those in favor, so signify by raising your hand or saying aye. And that motion carries. And then agenda item number 14 is the one that we're always looking for. Motion to adjourn. Right. Thank Second. you, Wes. Um, thanks, everybody. This was uh, it's a, it was it's, it was a tremendously efficient meeting. So thanks everybody for uh, being prepared and paying attention. And we will talk to you next Thursday when we do our regulation review. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night.